Okay, good evening, uh, afternoon, morning, or whatever it only be. Um, yeah, this is, tonight is actually the yorchet of my father. And uh, that's what's behind this. I really wanted to say Yeshua on Tshuva. He passed away two days before Yom Kippur in uh, Tavshin Memches. And I still very much miss him. Um, a major, 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 but major impact on my life. Uh, I used to teach every Leil Ches uh, Tishrei. Uh, I don't do it anymore. I teach all day somewhere else in the morning. Um, but this is going to be Leil Nishwas, my father, if you don't mind, he was a very special person, which uh, I can only just start by saying one thing. This is something which has touched me for literally all my life. You know, when you grow up in a post-Holocaust neighborhood, there's a lot of people there that were religious before and were, became non-religious after. And so a lot of my friends were, uh, were in that situation. And uh, I remember I was like nine years old, walking the street uh, with my dad coming back Saturday night from Shul. And I asked him, how come we're religious? <laughs> he looked at me and says, why are you asking? So I said, listen, all these people were religious before and they walked away because God wasn't there with them. So, so why, why, why are we still religious? You know, he had lost a wife and a child and 12 siblings and parents and grandparents. I mean, he had lost everything. Uh, I grew up, we only had the nucleus family. We didn't, didn't know what a cousin looked like. So he just looked at me and says, you'll never understand this, but believe me, he never left me. He was always there with me. Now, I don't know what that is, but I know I really trust my dad. And my dad taught me that um, in the pits of hell, in Dante's Inferno, uh, he didn't feel alone. He literally, and for me, that's probably the most important lesson I ever learned. And uh, that's the foundation of my identity. So. Uh, this should be the Ilu Nishmasai just for that alone, but obviously so much more. Let's start this. Okay, the topic of, of the evening is Shuva. Are we successful? I really want to say, why are we not successful? I didn't want to print that. I don't think that was uh, fair. But uh, it starts with a question that I was asked. I was in South Africa for Tisha B'Av, for the I taught over there. And that's a community which I helped um, create. It's a community in um, Johannesburg. It's called The Base. And they're all, you know, Hashem, unbelievable people that that uh, Chuva. And, I, 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 and I'm like one of the, I, let's just say the back, the man in the background, which helped create that community. Uh, I, I like that part, like being, you know, let, just like make sure it happens. Uh, so uh, uh, they, one person asked me, are you an FFB or a BT? Well, obviously, you know what that is. If you're American, FFB is from my birth and BT is Baal Tshuva. So I looked at him and says, you know, I'm neither. I am literally SBV, sinner by birth. I don't think I ever really, really succeeded in doing tshuva. I mean, I don't think religious people do. I think the only people that really did tshuva are people that made major changes in their lives to a whole new way of thinking and perceiving reality. Have I got there? Have I even attempted it? I don't think that's what's happening. I think somehow we think tshuva means I'm sorry. No, I won't do it again. I'll be good or something like that. And, and that's why it doesn't work. Because <laughs> that's not really what tshuva is. I'd like to explain what tshuva is. You know, I was really inspired in this, literally from um, sitting in South Africa. Because they are really, if you don't know if you realize it, that's a community which overwhelmingly, there's not nobody there, which is a second generation Orthodox person. So everybody is just started somewhere early in his own life. It's really beautiful to see. And they, I look at them and say, I, I haven't done that. Have I gone through a metamorphosis? Have I changed the way I think? Because that's what they've done. 
have I walked away from my sense, my comfort zone and my identity to basically take on a new identity? Have I? Have we, if I may say, but I'm gonna use I because I'm more comfortable with that, but have any of us? Is that not what they taught us? We look at the tshuva and all we see is a bunch of confessions. Oh, I'm terrible, I'm decrepit, I, I don't know, I stole, I'm tre treacherous. There's a lot of things we say over there. By the way, I always find it funny that people sing this in, in, in a sing song, you know, if they would only translate in English, they would hide under the covers. So who's gonna say, oh, I am wasted to space and I am treacherous and I'm a liar. And we all sing it together and it makes no sense to me. I mean, do you really mean what you're saying? I mean, I personally hide under the talus when I say it. I feel ashamed to even say it in front of next to people. How can you possibly say these things and sing so no, they tell me the story, oh, this is for the tzibur. Give me a break. <laughs> the only video for the tzibur is the shalich tzibur or the kayin gadol. You're a yachid. You're not miyachid. In din, this is not called a video. We didn't tzibur, we didn't yachid. Give me a break. And halacha, this has no real meaning. So how can you possibly sing song your asham? Okay, but that's a side remark, which has to be thought about if you're to take this really seriously. But at the end of the day, we look at tshuva as basically looking, we're bad. And what are all the slichas? The slichas are saying, listen, you should forgive us because we have a hard life. <laughs> that's basically most of them are medieval poetry dealing with the crusades or the other or the terrible trials and tribulations of that era, which we were totally, you know, uh, persecuted by, by the church, etc. And obviously, especially in Europe. And there you have it. And those are the slichas. What are we crying about? Don't be angry at us because we really paid our pound of flesh. <laughs> okay, we paid our pound of flesh, now be nice. You know, this is what it sounds like. I'm sorry, don't be angry at me anymore. Why are you still angry at me? Is that what Shuva is? Is that all it is? How long can that possibly last? How long do all these commitments really last? I hate to say it mostly from Titus Esther until Purim. because we're quite smug and happy with ourselves. We just feel, oh, those are slight aberrations. The typical reality is what you say in tshuva, you sometimes say, oh, that wasn't really me. There's a deeper, pure me there. And that's who I really am. But everything I've thought, said, felt, and done, that's not really me. It's totally Jewish schizophrenia. Is that real? Is that not really you? Well, who was it? You know, it reminds me of a Bach that comes to me and asks me, Rabbi, I have problems with Machshavas Zoros, foreign ideas during Davni. I looked at him and said, my beloved boy, those aren't your Machshavas Zoros. Those are your real Machshavas. Kedusha and Tyra are your Machshavas Zoros because they're very foreign to you. That's what you normally think. You call this Machshavas Zoros. This is you. Get used to it. Machshavas Zoros. It's Machshavas Shali. You know, I always say the Yetzirah doesn't have to come to you, you're it. So what are we talking about? This funny feeling we have, we exonerate ourselves. Oh, that wasn't really me. And we have this Hasidish idea, there's a real me somewhere in there that really wants to connect to God. Find him for me, please. Because why he doesn't show up any other day of the year. Do you really think that the Rambam means that? And if it's Garish thing, you've been Garish and Isha because you really, you're the Shama, want something. Your will of your neshama has nothing to do with your bechira. You're not nidain, you're not judged or assessed on the will of your neshama. You're assessed on how much your neshama came down into guf, into machshava, deber, and maisa. So hell, it doesn't work. Something's off and something's wrong. So I'm not asking, are we successful? I'm saying, why do we fail? I'm talking about myself, okay? I'm going to use the royal we, meaning myself. Obviously, I can't say anything about anything. Grant, I'm sure that you do well, you know what I mean, et cetera, and you're all tzaddik and gemurim, but I'm an, I'm an SBB. I'm an ancient sinner, and I, you know, I'm trying to do tshuva. I'm not a little kid. My birthday's coming up soon. You know, mom is unbelievable. It's frightening to think. Two days after Yom Kippur, and you know, <laughs> I don't know. Nishkin Yingle, and I'm still trying to do tshuva. What's, what, what are we looking for? 
what are we really looking for? And that's what I want to know. So here I want to start, first of all, with the first source, if you have those sheets. And the first source we have here is a Meiri in the base of Chira of Rosh Hashanah, Dav Tezayin Amid Beis. We all know that there's no Viduri on Rosh Hashanah. To the extent we don't even mention sin, right? Uh, uh, we don't eat nuts because the gematria of sin. The Kotzke one said, yeah, don't forget that hate is also the gematria of hate. Don't do sins either. Don't just not eat nuts or things like that. You know, without gedenken, that hate is also a gematria of hate. We don't mention sins, right? So one would say, hey, there's really no tshuva at all mentioned on Rosh Hashanah. The only thing is found is in the Ari that we should be misvad de belach hashvishas kiyos. But reality in Din is not found. Yet look at the Meiri, when the Meiri writes as follows. Although it is true that daily people should do introspection into their actions. Lashuv mi dakara to return. I'm going to use the correct word, not to repent. I'm not sure what the word means. Lashuv is to return from his evil path. Kemoshamru, as the Mishnah says in Pirkei Avis in the second chapter in the 10th Mishnah, Shuv Yom Echad Lifnei Misascha. You must, be, you must repent one day before your death, meaning to say every day. We call Makam, although this is true, that we should be actually be doing introspection daily. Bisman Azeh, at this, at this season that we're in at the moment, the season of Tishrei, starting with Rosh Hashanah, with Sono Lamar, Rosh Hashanah, I mean to say Rosh Hashanah, literally the first two days. It is worthy and correct that you should be even more inspired and awoken to do introspection, literally, and Lashiv B'tshuva. Amru Chazal, where you get the source from this? He says the source is Derech Mashal. It's a very important language of the Meiri. When it says the three books being opened, he understands there's no books up there and there's no three there. What does it mean? The three books are being opened on Rosh Hashanah. You all say, you think God has a pen a parchment. He has a shayt for stam there. What does it mean? So the Miri says what it means. This really means, this metaphoric language is, it means we look at each one, who he really is, and then we categorize him and we put him in a certain, so to speak, a book, metaphorically a book. It means we decide who he is. We look at you and we decide, oh, you are a baby. You are a Russia. You are a Tzad. And that's what we're looking for. And that's what it means. It doesn't mean there's a book open. It means to say that we assess you and categorize you. That's what the Meiri says, by the way. So I, it's, it's, I always think of this when they tell me, uh, where exactly, you know, uh, you mean to say they're going to decide who I am. Okay, very, I wish they do well. But the funny thing is, you can bless me from today to tomorrow. It depends on me. So what are you blessing me that I should be signed up this way or that way? It's the fee myself. What is this? So Terrence says, what is it? It's a tefillah. That hopefully it's a prayer that hopefully your mycin will be enough. If that's what people mean, good, because that's what I mean. It means I hope that your mycin will be enough to justify that you'll be called a tzaddik within or a or a within chas v'sholem, not to be a rasha. That's what this is, according to the Miri. He continues and he writes, this is the reason why people should be introspection. Why? Because there's a din. And that is because you are an audit at the moment, if you, you should definitely be expected, you're expected at this period of time to go into introspection and to fix your accounts. Specifically on Rosh Hashanah. This is the day of the audit and obviously they will incorporate into your audit also the fact that you were a bishop, you were and also tshuva. And it's mischayev, mitzad, what, what causes, what's mischayev? The mishpat. Mishpat is mischayev tshuva. So he says further, um, therefore, on Rosh Hashanah, you should wake up to do introspection. I wonder how many of us experienced that this Rosh Hashanah. 
they all tell me about Malchus Hashem and Malchus and Malchus. And here he says, all this leads to introspection. That's what it says. And you should be doing introspection. Then he says a sharp, very sharp sentence. He continues and writes, Va Misrasha Bismana Zemin Achuva. People who are a bit um, lethargic, they're not active, proactive to actively engage in introspection and chuva on Rosh Hashanah specifically. He has no part. In God, the Lord of Israel. That's a very sharp sentence. Ain't lo chelik velokei Yisrael. It's not just you didn't do a mitzvah. It's not to you know you are perceived as what. Well, let's understand the source of this language. The source of this language of ain't lo chelik velokei Yisrael is in the second source found in Shmuel Beis Pasuk Derech Chaf. It's Pasuk Aleph. In the famous rebellion against King David, when King David was originally appointed as king, so we know that all the Shvatim came together, and then there was a fellow called Sheva ben Bichri, where he created a revolt, a revolt, and all of them rebelled from David and left him. The only people that stayed with David was his familial tribe, Judah, Yehuda. So if you read the Pasuk over there in your second source, there was a wicked person there, Ushmai Sheva ben Bichri. His name was Sheva ben Bichri. Yamini, he belonged from Shevet bin Yamin. He blew in the shofar in order to create, the, to cause attendance, to cause attention. And he said, We have no part with David, Verona, Chana, Lana, Ben Yishai. The, family, the Jesuit, the Ben Yishai, is not part of our inheritance. So let us go. We don't need him. Ishto, I love Yisrael. Everyone go back to your own tents, your own home, walk away from David, and they did. And this is the Lushan of the Miri when it says, but David, the Ben Yishai. This is the idea of Yisrael. This is what he's taking. It's very clear that the, the, the language of the Miri stems from this Pasuk, and what he's inferring is that a person who doesn't go with introspection on Rosh Hashanah and to Tshuva, due to the fact that there's a Mishpat, he is a Meirid B'Malchus. He is literally rebellious in Malchus Shammai. That's what it is. That's what he's literally telling you. This is not just an inference. Anybody that knows his Pesuk in Karila, that's what this man is saying. It is the Malchus of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It, because this is a day of Kabbalah's Ol Malchus Shemayim, which is expressed with the fact that he does assessment of who his subjects are, checking whether he wants to be a king over them or not, people who don't care enough about it and don't engage in introspection and self-assessment, and ultimately at least starting the path of rectification, they are perceived as not caring and flaunting the king, and therefore they could the push it married by Malchus. If this is the day of Kabbalah's Ol Malchus Shemaim, the lack of Pishput Remaisim and Shuva is the Hepech HaGomer of Kabbalah's Ol Malchus Shemaim. So you can sing Amelcha Kodesh Fun Heint Biz Morgan from today until tomorrow, and you can sing all the songs you want, Melech, Melech, Melech. Oh, but if you were, didn't wear Pashmish Remaisim, also Shuva because of Amos Adin. Which is Gilui Hamalchus, then you push it married by Malchus. What do we do? What you have to clear is the idea of married by Malchus I hate to say it, there's no enough Kimina. <laughs> if you didn't care enough about the Mish, but that's a married by Malchus. I, I didn't know the Meir, it doesn't matter. I'm trying to look at this and say, hello, we, got to, we still have a few days to fix this. Because the concept of Rosh Hashanah, as the Rishonim writes, is the first 10 days of the year. It starts from Rosh Hashanah and ends with Yom Kippur. The whole din of saying Kol Nidre is based on a Gemara that says we're supposed to stand by Rosh Hashanah and be Maisa Meidon on Nidorim. So the Rishonim asked, well, why do we do it if that's because of Yom Kippur? And the Rishonim all say, because Rosh Hashanah is a 10-day period. It means the head of the year. That's a 10-day period. It's not one day, not two days. It's 10 days. So we talk about the Mishpat, my dear friend, this Mishpat goes, remember, hopefully we're Bainanim and the Mishpat is still hanging with us. 
And the Gemara of that Mishpat, they will decide what you are is only on Yom Kippur. So the chur the chiv of tshuva in these days specifically this is midin kabbalas ol malchus shemayim equals and without it you're a myrid b'malchus. And here the question lies: If so, why don't we have any of that in the siddur? Any of that in the siddur and any of that in the gemara? We don't have a din of vidui at all mentioned on Rosh Hashanah. Adirab. The opposite is true. If there's an Indian of Vidu, it's supposed to be Belachash, so to speak, says the Ari. The Gros says you shouldn't be Misvada. Why isn't there Vidu? You just told me you have to do a Fash with your mice and allows the Bachuva. What's the story here? We can see carefully where does the Rambam bring this halacha? Well, look at source Gimel. The Rambam says something interesting. He writes, Returning to the original state, which is what tshuva means, and also crying out to God for help to return to the original state of man. It's always good. It's a good thing to do, and it can work. But at least 10 days that we are already holding there, we did today the fifth day of sleep is of Sesame tshuva. It really works well. It would seem to be that during the whole year, there's a lot of auditing and assessing. But here it goes easier. It's smoother. It's a path that says, look for God when he's around. Now, I don't understand. That's a Allah in tefillah. And the Ramam seems to be saying, the Yeshu Hashem searching for God is what tshuva is. It's not saying sorry. It's Yeshu Hashem. And just like tefillah is a halacha that you stand in front of God, the din is, as we all know, the Rambam. That the kavana, which is ma'akiv and tefillah, is that you are standing in front of God. Something which is very hard to do. It takes years of training to actually, actually feel, experience that and somehow, first of all, even to experience it cerebrally. And once you understand what the terms really mean, how that becomes part of your emotional intelligence. That's an avoid the kashish of amigdash to be mechav and sh'oimid lifnei hashchina. Yes, what does the word shchina mean, let alone oimid lifnei hashchina? It's not simple to dabu. But that's a kavana that if you don't have that by Shemana Esri, it's as if you didn't do Shemana Esri, you can say it again. That's in first Shiram and Peri Daudich is feeling a person does Shemana Esri. And at least the first three brachas doesn't do the best he or she can. I'm not saying that everyone succeeds. But the attempt to, to go into a mindset that I am standing in front of the Shekhinah, whatever Shekhinah means, I guess our job is to know what that means. Without that, your Shemana Esra is nil and vo- null and void. It's nothing. You weren't in the kind of mitzvah of the avoid the Hashem. It's a mitzvah I say of tefillah, of lo'ovde b'chol levavchem, b'chol nafshechem. Ram Pas brings it and say for our mitzvahs, it's a mitzvah de raisa. You weren't in the kind of mitzvah. It's a pretty lousy thing to do, specifically around this time of the year, to daven without kavon of aymer dipne ashkina. What are you doing? You be mevatla mitzvah I say, an Rosh Hashanah. I mean, how bad can this go? Or say to me, Chuba, you wake up with Slich, it's the same medieval poetry. What about Damish Manasso? You can mention. And this is the Allah. The Allah is the what? That you're supposed to. So, dear Shashem, be much of me. She said, the Chuba is like Tvila. It's Drishas Hashem. What does that mean? It clearly says the Chuba does not mean repenting from sin, it means searching for God awareness. What are you looking for? He's there. He's always there. As my daddy taught me, in hell he'll be there with you. Don't worry about it. The question is, God awareness is what we're looking for. What we're looking at is, where is God in my mind? How much do I live with him in my mind? This is the question on the table. And this is what the Rambam says. The mitzvah of these 10 days, these are 10 days which are conducive 
to search within ourselves the profundity of God awareness. That first sip in Shulchan Orch, the Ramah of Shibisi Hashem the Negdi Tamid, which is probably one of those mitzvahs which doesn't do too well. And the Ramah literally says that this is the foundation of Kol HaTorah of our mitzvahs. He's quoting Amir Nebuchim in Chelik Beis, Perik Lin Beis, Chelik Gimel Lin Beis, if I'm not mistaken. It's a whole Perik Amir Nebuchim here that's interesting, Ramah that quotes it. Actually, a nice letter of the Ramot to the Marshal, excusing himself for learning Mary Nebuchadnezzar. He says he only does it during Ben Azman. <laughs> he doesn't do it during the Zman. There's an interesting Chuba the Mar in Chuba's Ramot to the Marshal on this. Whatever it be, so it says the Ramot starts with, with it that way. The Ramot starts, and that's why you have to behave in a certain way wherever you go, how you get dressed, how you even take a shower. And so on and so forth. There's a lot of halachas there if you learn the beginning of Arachayim, all based on the idea that we must somehow do actions which will help us internalize and concretize the idea that yes, I am in the presence of God. It almost it, now the question is how do you take this? Is this an Orwellian nightmare? A Hoover big brother? <laughs> or is this no? He 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 wants to be with me the whole time. It's what my daddy taught me on the way back from Shul. He's always with me. In hell and high water. He's just tied to the hip. I prefer to see it that way because that's what my daddy taught me. He's always with me. But if he's always with you, act accordingly. And that's the question on the table. Is that what we're looking for? That's, the, that's what the Rambam says. So these are the 10 days. And there's a big Kiddush that because it is so conducive for searching God at that time, a Yochit, it helps also. Because normally it doesn't help that easily. All of God will answer us constantly in the plural. But in the singular, it's not as simple, and that's Dafka, and only specifically it's conducive in these 10 days. As to why it's another topic, I wish I had the time, but this is an important fact. So the Rama does put down, it teaches us a yisai of how we define tshuva. This is the first thing I see when I learned this Rama. The Agdor of tshuva is dear Drishas Hashem. I'm looking for God. Looking for God in my life. What do you mean you're looking for? You're looking for him in your consciousness. In the way you see, is he part of your world? Or is that something you meet and show when you open the door in Kodesh or whatever it be? That's the question on the table. To what extent am I fulfilling Shivisi Avayil and Negdi Samit? That's the question on the table. That's Dir Shu Hashem be Motzai. The Ramu then continues, Yerma Kippurim was man tshuva l'kola yochid l'rabim. On Yom Kippur, it's a Zman specific for Tshuva, both Liyachit and for Rabim, not only the 10 days, but specifically the culmination of the 10 days, which is Yom Kippur. Why? It's a time set aside for Mechila and Slicha. Everyone is obliged to do Tshuva of Lisvatis by Yom Kippur. Now, what's the source of this uh, Ramba? There's so much things said, so let's just look what the source of this is. The source of this is a psikhtadr of Kana. It's found at the back page of your source sheet, source Chof Hei. It's quoted in the Orzaruah, Chelik Beis, Hifis Yom Kippur. And there the Orzaruah brings the Medrash. If you go down, literally the last source on the page, you go up six lines. And it starts as follows. Ube Medrash Shuva, which is the Psikta on Shuva. Matsasi, Yisbarach Shmai Shakarish Bochu, blessed is the name of God. Be Yisalla Zichrai, that his memory be elevated. Shu Mechavev as Yisrael, because he loves the Jews. Betikalim Asher Shimei Shuva, and he set aside for them 10 days of Shuva. Shafilu Yochid, Oisabe and Shuva. Mikablin Shuva. That was the first Allah that we just saw. A special din of Aser Shem Eitshuva. That's a lachalip over there. Shvan Shuvas get Shuvas at Tzibur. Lefichach, he continues there. But Tzrichim Kol Yisrael Lahazik B'Tshuva 
So what's the, that's the mocker of this Ramba. That because this is a Zman Tshuva, like Kate's for the Yochin, God really wants to do this. Therefore, it is really something you should do. The Rama took the word Srichim and made it into Chayavim, but obviously the question, when he means obligation, does it mean it's a mitzvah, say say midr midr Anybody that knows Ramam knows there is no mitzvah sasei of tshuva. And doesn't, write, even, doesn't even write shechayavim lasas tshuva. I'll read that to you in two minutes. Here it simply means you have to do it because this is a, this is a, zeiz damnut. <laughs> you have a choice time, man. This, if you can't miss this, I've got to go to Saks. There's a great sale. You have to go to sex. It's a great sale. That's what chayavim here means. It doesn't mean it because the, the opportunity is of me to do this. How could you not? If you don't take this opportunity, you're ultimately flaunting in the mouth of a Kaddish Baruch Hu. God says, here, I'm open, and you don't care about it. What are you doing? You say, couldn't care less about this opportunity you gave me. There's no bigger chilo Hashem and prikas oh Malchus Shemayim than that itself. So we see the head here, the Rama only mentions Shuva on Yom Kippur. What about Rosh Hashanah? Didn't the Me'iri write that there's a Mishpat on Rosh Hashanah and whoever doesn't do it is a Meirid B'Malchus? Why does he bring only this Psikta, which is only on Yom Kippur? And the interesting thing is that in Rosh Hashanah, he does mention Tshuva, but where? Look at Source Dalit, the very famous Ramba. Afal Pishit Kiyas Shaifa Be Rosh Hashanah, Tzairus Akasu. It's a law. The Gemara says this. The Gemara says, Lama Taikim Be Rosh Hashanah, Lama Taikim Marian. Why do we do Kiyas and Tzairus on Rosh Hashanah? And the Gemara says, What kind of question is that? Rachman Amar Tiku. It was a misnagdish, a litvish gemara. Why do we learn? Why do we die? do Kiyas Shef and Rosh Hashanah? What do you mean, why? It's a thing. It's a clear gemara that first and foremost, get used to it, because that's what God wants. Now, is there anything I can learn from it, get from it? That's another issue. But the first and foremost, we don't do it because of A or because of B or because of C. That's a gemara. We do it because the gemara says, Rachmana Omar Tiku, God said, blow. And this is Lashon Rambam, Afa Pishit Kia Shreifer Rosh Hashanah Xeris Akasu. So, what are all these different reasons that Sadia Goyim brings five reasons, the ritual which adds two reasons? He calls these reasons Remes Yesh Boy. Remes means to say it is not the reason; it's not the time of the Shreifer. It's an inference. It also this Torah shot Remes Drush and Sad. This is the remez of the shayfer. It infers. It means to say it's also part of God's will. God wants you to be aware of that, but not as the reason for shayfer, but as a remez, as some kind of an inference that you can take from shayfer. If you understand the difference, like once again, I don't have the time to explain the difference between shat and remez and drush and so but that's what it means. Remez is but a very beautiful Ramba. There are times where Ramba brings tamayam mitzvahs, plenty of times. Here, the Ramah doesn't call this Tama Mitzvah. Ramah spent a lot of trucking in Perecheli Gimel on Tama Mitzvah. He doesn't say this is the Tama Mitzvah. He says it's a remez in the Mitzvah. Very big difference. Why do I care about the remez? Who says we're supposed to be worried about Ramaz? The answer is it's a Pasik in Parshas B'Shalach. Pasuk says in Parshas B'Shalach by the story of Mora. Pasuk says after they came, after Kriyas Yamsu, they went to a place, there was no oasis and there were trees there, but they said, listen, it's a, it, the, the waters are bitter. And he showed him a tree and he threw it into the, uh, into the water and it sweetened the machlekes of Yishayim. Was it a sugar tree or something else? Or was it a nest, but nest or not, whatever. 
And then God says as follows. By Yomer and God says, and Moshe says, Im tishmu, if you would definitely listen, to the voice of God, your Lord. By Yashar say you will do that which is straightforward in his eyes. And you will listen to his mitzvahs. And you will adhere, you will see yourself as responsible for fulfilling. That's what Shmira means. Lishmar means you live with a sense of responsibility. Therefore, you do what it takes to make sure it happens. Then he says, what does it mean? So the Ibn Ezra writes over there on the spot. Whenever it says Lamed or Bet by Lishmaya Lehazin or Bimitzvaisav, Limitzvaisav, Ain Pirush Lishmah Hadavar. It doesn't mean to hear the words. Raklavin Tama in Yan no Sadavar. What's the reasoning behind it? Not just what to do mechanically. What is it that he wants me to get, do with this? What am I to gain from this? The Ramban loves this and writes here again. This is in Shmais Tesvav Fasik Chavav. Ramban continues and says it's only if we learn Tame Mitzvos or the Ramazma Mitzvos, trying to find what the Mitzvos teach us, will we be able to distill the Mitzvos and get a value system which will teach us what is Yashar and what is Taib. Without understanding the thinking behind mitzvahs, the philosophy behind the mitzvahs, we will be lawyers. Yeah, we'll be taking the letter of the law, but we will miss the music behind the mitzvahs and we will lose what God wants you to be, to internalize that into values, which will help you go through all what we call the gray areas of the world. Now, there are no gray areas. They're either governed by legislation or by God's values. Take your pick. And if we don't live by God's values, we're not Makai the mitzvah. He says, Ayosha Bainai Hashem. And this is what the Ramban says. There's no way you can know what is Yosha Bainai Hashem by just knowing the Allahis. You have to distill it into values, into philosophical underpinnings, into meta Allahic thinking in a way which will teach you a value system. And this is what the Ramam obviously does here when he says there's a Remis Yesh Badava. He's fulfilling this Ibn Ezra and this Ramban. Yes, what exactly is this? Now, this is found in Halacha. There's an interesting Ravya. The Magen Avram in Hilchus Shaifer brings the Ravya, one of the Balea Taishas of Germany, grandson of the Ravon, where the Ravya said the Nusach of the Bracha on Shaifer is, is Bracha to Hashem Elokeinu Melech Ha'ilam, Asher Kitshonu B'Mitzvaisav, V'Tzivanu Lishmoya, B'Kol Shaifer. Not the Shmaya Kol Shofar to listen to the voice of the sound of the Shefer, the big Kol Shofar. The Magan Ram says, What are you talking about? What I have to listen to its message. I have to hear the sounds. And the Ravya is partial. The Ravya goes with the Ram of no, the mitzvah is not to hear the sounds, but to understand literally. So he believed that this remit is an ikr dinner, the kavana of the Shemaya. And that's the kavana sa mitzvah. The mitzvah, just hearing a sound without searching for its meaning, we, this is not the mitzvah of Shaifa. At least the Dasa Rav Yod, that's why he says the mitzvah is to say, Hashem Kitshonu B'Mitzvahnu, B'Kol Shaifa. Listen to the music, man, <laughs> not just to the noise. Oh, was it the Shima Achash, Tein the Shimas, everyone goes, you know, they... Fetch your own. Oh, it was a clean kia. It wasn't clean kia. God help me. Vas hata satan mit lishmaya bikol shayfer mardikulal. You guys are missing the boat. What does it mean? What's the kail shayfer that mechuyev to listen to? So the Ramam continues. Let's read what it says. Uru yishenim ishinaschem. 
Wake up those who are in sleep from your sleep. Those in a slumber. Get up. Do introspection. And come and come back in return. And remember your creator. Who are these people? So he says, People forget absolute tr truths. Here I have to explain a Ramba. What does emis mean in the language of Ramba? When you said in Rosh Hashanah, Kiatem, Elkim, Emes, Utvorcha, Emes, Fakaim, Laad, did you mean he doesn't fib? You truth. Oh, you keep your promises. Yingalach. What does Emes mean on, in Rambam? It means, well, you know, Ram says that literally in the Perik Aleph Yisaidi Atayra, the first four Allahs, he explains what does it mean, Hashem Elokim Emes. There's two types of truth. There's a relative truth, which means to say, if you, what is truth? Well, the truth demands three points. Source, derivative, and the way it was taken, the way it was understood in the middle. I see you, I see Danny Palikoff. I look at myself, I, I see his face, he's smiling now. Oh, I say Danny, you're smiling, okay. So what happened? There is him, there's me, I'm just looking at the picture, me thus reacting and saying something. That's called the truth. There's a synchronization between point three and point one vis-a-vis -vis what's in the middle. If my cleat, if I taking in the picture was correct, I would then react accordingly. If I look at him and say, oh, did he make a bracha on his nails? You know, or something like that. That I'm not seeing him. No, I'm not seeing him. I don't know. He has absolute rub over there saying Krishna on the, on the, on the wall. <laughs> Whatever it is, you know, I, I don't. Am I seeing him or am I not seeing him? This is the question. So Emmis means to say that, that my klita, the I would say the middle point, took in the first, the shirish, the first point correctly, and thus it reacted accordingly. And this is when point one and point three are in synchronization because the middle point which connects them was correct, was synchronized. That only exists in a world of space where there are three points. What are you gonna do with God? Is God essentially true? What does he also have three points? What does it mean at Shem Elohim Emes? He doesn't have points, he's absolute. He doesn't have, he's not numbered, he does not linear. He's not even a dot, a mathematical point. So when you say God is true, what do you mean? The Ramu says that's exactly what it means. It means he's an absolute existence. He's total oneness, and there is no such thing as not, he's an absolute existence. He had no reason, and he has no, he is because he is. Language of the Rambam is, Hakol tli imbay, ve'enu toli b'shum dover. Everything depends on his will and whim. He depends on naught. There's no reason for him to be. He just is. We, there's a reason for our existence. Whether the laws of science put us together, now our, our, our energies are, look like a body. As soon as the laws of physics will change, we'll be gas. I don't know. So the reason you are what you are now, because certain laws of physics. Otherwise, I wouldn't call you per homo sapien. I would call you, I don't know, whatever you'll be. Will it be gas? Will it be whatever you'll be? Whatever form that energy will take. The fact that this energy was formed in a certain way has a reason. It's called the laws of physics. So you, your existence, the way we have it, is the product of the laws of physics. And the nature of primary matter, whatever it was. Granted. So you are not an absolute existent. You're an existence which is really depending on the existence of certain laws and certain laws which govern our existence. Then I have my I and my you have your you. God is not governed by any laws because he has no reason. He is an absolute existent. He is primary matter, <laughs> not governed by anything. That's called emes. Who I share, I Hashem, Lakim emes. That's what the Ramah writes in Allah Chedad. He is absolute. He is absolute, and I mean to say with an, you know, with an E, not the vodka. He is absolute. That's what he is. 
when I say Hashem Elokim Emes, means that you're an absolute existent. It means you're the source of all and there's nothing outside of you. If you said something, it's not just will be, it already exists. When will it be revealed? Whenever you choose. But the energy is there. The Siba is there with the Degili of the Ratzon. This is what's called Emes. And the Rambam says that people forget this. What makes them forget this? Behavle Hazman, in the midst of time, what does Havevel mean? This is a Ramban in Kohelis. And the Pasuk Havel Avalim Hakol Havel, the Ramban says, you know what Havel is? You ever drive through a fog? You something have seen Hare Yerushalayim, sometimes you get stuck with these big fogs. It's like a pea soup fog, you know what I mean? It looks so thick. Yet all you need is a little light of a little, a little enlightenment, a little bit of sun, and it evaporates. It has, it looks, we get such a dense consistency, and actually it's nothing more than a few drops. With a little bit of enlightenment, it becomes nothing. Ramban says that all of reality is not just temporal, it's nothing more. Our language that we have is based heavily on imagination. We, um, I do suggest sometime you read Ben Azman and Harari's book, Sapiens. It's a good read, by the way. You know what I mean? We create figments of imagination. For example, corporations. They don't exist. They exist because we want them to exist. Um, uh, nations, the idea of national identity. They exist because we want them to exist. It helps us function together because now we have to function together as numbers in order to, 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 to succeed and to, and, and, and to evolve and to, and, to, and to live. We have to be able to live together. So we have to create a common identity. We make a flag. We do a lot of things. These are not, there's no such thing in science. This is a man-made reality, which is a figment of imagination. The idea that all People have human rights. Animals don't have human rights. They have no rights. The rights of nature. That's what they have. We don't have that. We created something for multiple reasons. I, I, I laud humanity for doing it. But let's understand this is human creation. Not absolute truths. Those are accepted truths that we all want to believe. Well, if you believe in God, so we know God gave rights. But if you don't believe in God, you want those rights because if not, we wouldn't be able, we would still be in a cave fighting with each other. We would still be foragers. We couldn't even be hunters. We couldn't have a team. We create so many things in order to um, in order for us to function together as a group. Yeah. We will die for the nation, for the king. We will die for the flag. Animals don't die for flags. We have greed. Animals don't have greed. I just came back from a, from a nice time in, in, in the Kruger. So I can talk about this. You know what I mean? You know, they never kill. Uh, uh, they only kill for survival. No animal will attack you unless you think you're endangering him or taking away his food. There's no kina, no covet, no, no ariga for taiva. There's no mitzim and oilam over there. It's unbelievable. All this is man-made, dimyoinus. We live in Lewis Carroll's, you know, in, 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 under the ground there together with the Mad Hatter. This is all Alice in Wonderland. This is a man-made reality. Is that an absolute reality or is that a relative reality created by man for multiple reasons in order to function or to create different things? Whatever it be, it's a man-made reality. All these are man-made. The whole if you would live with an apt sense of absolute reality, if you would live thinking science, chemistry, physics, believe me, the world of Taiva would be out of business. <laughs> Definitely, uh, <laughs> Madison Avenue couldn't sell a car anymore. How do you sell a car? You put a scantily clad, if clad at all, female on the hood of a car. Buy this, you get that. 
or you have this guy, you know, riding around, rough riding in, in Grand Canyon, smoke Marlboro, and you will get, you'll be in a horse. Well, I still remember with Salem cigarettes, they used to have, you can't take the country out of Salem. They had this boy and girl in tennis whites in a lush meadow next to a beautiful brook. And that this was a, this was an advertisement for a menthol cigarette. Now, let me tell you, I smoke. There's no such thing as a cool cigarette. A cigarette is a hot coal on one side, an idiot on the other side, and a roll of tobacco between them. There is nothing cool about a cigarette. I mean, let me show you that. The dad says, no, it did me Smoke this, and you and your mind are straight into that meadow in tennis whites with a, with a cute little female, and there's a beautiful brook in front of you, and God knows what happens next. This is all demyoinus. We live, we don't live absolutes. We don't even live science. I'm not talking about philosophies. We don't even live science. Our language is not an absolute language. The language we use is a language is totally relative to our usage. You call this a book. What are you calling it a book? I suggest it's a rectangle of cardboard, another rectangle of cardboard, a bunch of rectangles of paper. The answer is just get together. It serves me as a book. I'm not looking at its components. I'm looking at what it is for me. I look at the door and I call it the door, but I could have, you know, this could have been for a Shiva bed. You just put the board <laughs> and lay it down and put something on it. It's called a bed. We call it the door because it's hanging on the hinges over here. It could be, you know, French windows. It depends what's on the other side. Your language is a language of function, which is totally relative to your usage. Our way we see things is not absolute. The way we see things are not in any sense true, even in the world of science, let alone in the world of metaphysics. We use nothing more than self-centered man's usage is how he defines reality. And if man wants to feel a certain comfort and therefore will create a certain Alice in Wonderland reality, so that will be what it is. And there you have the world of fashion. No, I remember talking to my daughters. They were wearing these high heels. It says, you know, you're killing your back. This is no good for your posture. Now, why are you doing this? Why well, start giving a class in anatomy why they're wearing high heels? And obviously my daughter says, Abba, Tafsik, you know, things like that. And the answer is, but I'm right. You're willing to sacrifice science in order to project a certain image, which is important in the world of La La Land. So far from the emiss, because you think in this temporal reality, which is Hebel, which two bits of enlightenment, if you'd only be a person thinking, I'm not talking about from just a thinking human being, looking at source and thus understanding this as what it is in its source form, you wouldn't get excited. You'd be functional. You'd be looking at things and seeing, is this justifiable or not justifiable? You would eat because it's nutrition. Not because, oh, that's a nice strawberry shortcake, you know what I mean? That you wouldn't even think in those terms. We think subjectively, far, far from truth. So the Raman calls this, I want you to hear the word. He says, I should love you, evil, love you, see you. That the way you see things won't help you, won't save you. Does he say that you're doing sin? No. If you look carefully at the Rambam, what kind of tshuva do we demand in Rosh Hashanah? Is he talking about tshuva from sin? Does he mention sin? No, he mentions the Veltishang, the way you see things, the paradigm, the glasses that we have. How do you experience life? Do you experience life through the absolutes and the truths? Or do you experience life through the temporal, that which is nothing more than mist? and actually evaporates with a bit of enlightenment. As the Ramam describes when he talks about people which fall into the world of taiva, obsessive desires, he says this occurs to a person which is lev haponui mina chokma. Your heart is empty of wisdom. You don't really understand. You may have, you may have a mayach of chokma, but you don't have a lev of chokma. Lev is the idea of Bina, Levava Yavin, the Shavarafalai, 
It means to say it's not just cerebral intelligence, it's something which has gone into your emotional intelligence and become vivid and real. Leiv ha-panim in ha-chachma. Your mayach may be full of chachma, but your leiv is panim in ha-chachma. And that's why all the lala land of the world comes and seeks into you, and that's how you live. Obviously, in a world of that, you don't remember your creator. Because what does it mean to remember your creator? What does Rabbam say? Rabbam says, the zichru es barachem. The Sharper tells you, wake up from this mist and remember your creator. What does it mean to remember your creator? So let's read Rambam. Rambam says in um, source Yud Aleph. Mitzvah says, say, Vushi Yeshuva Chotem Yicheto Lifnei Hashem. You must return from your sin in front of God. What does it mean in front of God? Why doesn't he say Yanyach Tfilin Lifnei Hashem? Why doesn't he say Leishem Besuka Lifnei Hashem? What's the mucker of the Rambam? There's a din of Lifnei Hashem by Tshuva. Where's the possible? Where's the lift me Hashem? Where's the mucker? And the answer is in Fursha Pasik and Chumash. Where's the Pasik and Chumash? Go to source Vav. Pasik says, Vayai will come to pass. When all these terrible things will happen to you in the Gullus. Those brach and that cloud that I told you before in the Teichacha, hello, these things are going to happen. All of a sudden, you will take it to heart. In other words, you may have had cerebral intelligence of God, you may have been aware of the Shulchan Aruch. You may have been aware of everything, but it didn't go down to your heart. It wasn't Levava Yavin. And now with the Taurus of Gullus, hopefully, the, the temporal world doesn't give you much because it's pretty bad. Hopefully at that stage, you will suddenly internalize emotionally that what? Where? What will you internalize? So what's the next Pasuk? The Shavta and you will return. Ad until Yud Kevavke Elokecha. You will turn to Yud Kevavke Elokecha. What does that mean? The Ramo understood that the Shavta Ad Yud Kevavke Elokecha means to say you will turn to an awareness that there's Yud Kevavke Elokecha. What does this mean? Well, I'm going to explain. The Ramo writes in um, Sefer Mitzvahs. In the first mitzvah, go to, in the eight, seventh mitzvah, excuse me, look at source test. No, excuse me, not, excuse me, a mistake. Source test vav. The first mitzvah, mitzvah, we show you know who at sivrish, it's sivanu lahamina, lohus, we are to believe, actually to know, if you know the Arabic word, and you know Rebchaim Eller's translation, it means to say that we must internalize and be convinced with it. That's what it means. Not faith, it actually means to know. There's no steer between the Sefer Mitzvahs and the Yad. If you read Rebchaim Ella's Tiagum of the Sefer Mitzvahs, you'll understand that. But who, what are you supposed to believe or rather know? Well, was it, there's God. No, that's not enough. If you just believe there's God, you work with kind of the Mitzvah. Of Anoichi Hashem Elokecha. What's the Mitzvah? There is a reason and a cause. Who which is that reason and cause is the source of all of existence. It's not enough to believe in God. You must believe the God, which is the source of all existence. I hate to say many people are not aware of that there's a bigger difference. 
You can have a God up in the heavens. There's a lot of gods, or the Greek gods, wherever they were, powerful entities which you were scared of. No, God's source of your existence, of all existence. How is he knows? How does he get from Anoichi Havaya Lokecha the idea of a love is Siba who poel the Kolonim Where does he see in the words Anoichi Havaya Lokecha? that I have to believe in a la visiba, primary reason, po'el kon himself, the source of all of existence. Where does this lie in the word yud ki vavke or elokecha? He doesn't even bring the words asher tzisicha me'eres mitzrayim. Oh, there we saw it with the maitzim of the nisa. No, he doesn't bring that. It's enough to say yud ki vavke elokecha. He's obviously inferring that the word Yud Kevavka means Poel Seila Visiba Poel Kolonim Tain. That's what it means. The Ramban says this in a very clear way in Source Yud Dalit. On the Pasik Anoichi Avayo Lokecha. Hadibu Azem Mitzvah Sasei. This is a positive mitzvah. Amar Anoichi Havaya, what does it mean? Yore Vitzaveh, he teaches and commands. He notifies, he teaches and commands, he commands you to internalize this knowledge. She Eduviaminu, you must know and also believe, equals the Ramban believes the knowledge, yes, you must know as much as possible, equals learn as much as you can of the literature there is available for this. And then you will realize, anybody that learns the literature will realize, it stops somewhere. My capability of comprehension stops somewhere. And I start not understanding the essence, but I can somewhat be magdir, the metzias. It's like learning kachim, it says neshem nezikin. You can say agdorus, but you can't say sforus. So he says an idea when there's no more place for svora, for understanding, then you have to go to Amuna. So the Ramban says the Yefto Yamin that what? Yesh Havaya, which means what? Klomar. What does Havaya mean? Hove Kadmon, a primary existent. Hove Kadmon, primary existent. Mi ito hayakol, all comes from him, behapis with his will, who be a cholton with his omnipotence. All comes from in his expression of his ratzon and his koyach. Period. This is the Rambam. Both the Ramban and Rambam concur that this is what Anoichi Havai Lokecha means. Anoichi Havai means you are the, you are, nothing is independent. All is nothing more than an expression of your will and your expression of yourself. That's all it is. Even our sense of independence is a created form that he created. For us, to us, these non-independent entities to experience psychologically independence and thus have free will. And thus, He is their Lord. Why? Why do we have to do that? And the answer is, you say, He acquired you. What did he acquire? I mean, every knani it means. What does it mean? The idea of kinyan means an action which creates a, a relationship. That's what it is. There are spousal relationships which we create with kedushin. You didn't buy the pound of flesh. You acquired a spousal relationship which is governed with certain halachas. That's why the Gemara says, without exerce a cause, we would have thought that she can do the Kedushin too. It's a mutual reality of creating a relationship, and the din is you have to do it. But Be'etzim, it's a kinyan of what? Of a relationship. Like Kinei Lecha You have to be a bully and own him? No, it means you created a fraternal relationship. Ramam describes in Pirish Mishnah how we're supposed to do it do activities which will solidify and concretize a fraternal relationship. Read Rambam. 
And there's obviously also keen of Dovrish Nochasim Sheish to Machrayis, Nochasim Sheim, Machrayis, the different Mishnahis, the end of the first break of creation. Those are monetary relationships. They include Shaloi, Beshusai, control, etc. So Kinyan doesn't mean I own. Kinyan means to say that I created a type, a certain type of relationship. When I say Vikainako, what does it mean? He created a relationship of creator and created. How did he create it? By creating me. In other words, there's an it's not just a created me and that's it. There's a relationship now of creator and created. And this is what Anoichi Avaya Lokecha means. You must live with the awareness of this relationship. We are commanded, Yoyrevi Yitzhava, you must live constantly with the awareness that we are nothing more than a created form of the primary existence an expression of his will and his omnipotence. That's what we are. The Emmas. The Emmas. In Havle Asman, oh no, I'm an independent show though, and I like ice cream. But if I want to know what I really am in Emmas, that's what I am. That's the safe from mitzvahs. One has to understand what the Rambam is talking about on Rosh Hashanah is about being mekayim anoichi Hashem elokecha. The Ramban writes, actually, it's also found in the Hasagis of Sefer HaMitzvahs. Let me read something to you. And go to, if you don't mind, the source Tesvav, the first Ramban in Sefer HaMitzvahs, and go to the um, third side. In the third line, and he writes as follows. Kabbalah's oil means the kiem of anoichi havaya elokech. When you want malchus Hashem, it means the perception that you are nothing more than a nivra and he's a bayre. Havaya is emes. I called tlui and boy ve'en hu toli b'shum davar. And we are nothing more than who hoi v'kadman b'chepsa v'yocholtai I exist. That is the essence of Kabbalah's oil ma'chus shamay. When you said shema Yisrael havaya lukeinu, what did you say? Hoi v'kadman shemimenu akol b'chepsa v'yocholtai who el lukeinu? I got to follow him. Why? Because I have a relationship of a bayre and a nifra, which is called v'kain akar. I am supposed to, that is the key, that is the din of Kabbalah's oil ma'chus shamay. And then the Ramban, so you understand how in Rosh Hashanah, if this is supposed to be a day of ma'chus shamayim, obviously the Iker Avoida is to come back to that awareness. Literally, as the Ramban writes, remember your creator. Zichru es bayrachem. He doesn't say that on Yom Kippur. Remember your creator. Remember the Vakaina Hakoil. Remember Hoive Kadmam Shimeno Hakol Bechefetz Viachilis. Remember, that's who you are. And all the rest is Alice in Wonderland. It says Kulai Hevel, Loshan Aramba. And he is a very special man. It is less than temporal. Most of the stuff we run after, we have to we say, shucks. Why'd I do it afterwards? You know, I want to tell you, I was once um, had to have a surgery on my back. I had a certain growth there. Didn't know what it was. Thank God it wasn't anything serious. I even wrote a will, believe me, beforehand. So here I am there, you know, and the, the pipes in my mouth, whatever it is, you know, all that stuff I had uh, and I had a movie of my life going in front of me, man. Okay, God knows. Let me see what happened here. So there's X amount of stuff in your life. Believe me, you want to fast forward. But there's sometimes you want to repeat and look at it again. That's the acid test. What's Havli Azman and what's not? 
how much of your life do you expect to want to do fast forward on? Oh man, how many Super Bowls did he get drunk with? How did he drink them beers? That's fast forward. I can tell you right now, when the pipes are in your throat and you're not sure if tomorrow morning you're going to get up or not after they put you over there, believe me, fast forward. And those few good things you did in life that you'd like to look over again and make it slow. <laughs> and those are the reasons you you're, you say, thank God for being born. That's the honest truth. That's the honest, honest truth. Anybody that went through such things can understand. Never, we only understand this when we're in bad places. But it's the truth. It's the truth. I've been there. <laughs> what can I tell you? It's the truth. So you understand, look, we don't, the Ramam says that the truth of Rosh Hashanah is not to worry about the sins, but worry about why you're doing sins. You can't fix anything with just dealing with the end result. You got to look at, not at the symptoms, you have to look at the source. You know what the source is? Let's read another piece of Ramban. Ramban continues in that thing in the third and the fourth line, Amru b'mechilta. And he quotes a mechilta and anoich Hashem lekecha. Lo yelech elohim acherim al panai. Do not have other lords together with me. Lama neemar. Goodness sakes. Why do you have to say that? You already said anoich yavai lekecha. Lefi shehu omer anoich yavai lekecha. Mashal lemelech. Shenichnas lemedina. Amru lo avadav gzor alem zerot. Well, legislate laws. No, I can't yet. When they will accept my malchus, which means, as we learned what it meant, then I will legislate laws. Because if they don't accept my malchus, how will they possibly fulfill my laws? What do you mean? Why not? Look at ourselves. We don't fulfill the laws. Why? Because we don't live with the awareness of a kainaka. We don't live with the awareness that Havaya Elokecha and the basic of the world was created for his purpose, not for us. And we're nothing more than pawns on his chessboard that he allows a certain wiggle room and movement, but as, as long as it doesn't disturb his game. And when we do disturb his games, he kicks us on the side and makes sure that we go back to the game. It's his game, not ours. Why are we living in demyoinus and forgetting our creator because we're shoyge b'hav le'azman? Why are we not successful in mitzvot? Because we lack kabolas oil machus shamayim, which Ramban and Rama both explain means we forget the idea that he's our creator. We forget that Yudke Vavke, Haive Kadman, Shimimeno Ako, Bechevs of Yechilis, that is their Lord. The agenda is his, the world is his, and we have, a, we have a part in his agenda. To live and be aware of his existence and to appreciate it. And that's the Ramban that you all know at the end of Parsha's fight. When the Ramban writes the Tachlis of Kala Bria and Kala Tayer of our mitzvahs, Sheyeda Ha'adam Shakel Bar'o. Be aware that you're a created form. Yodelo Akachnid, you will acquiesce and actually be thankful. You acquiesce, you will finally actually agree that you're created. You actually be thankful for taking part in his game. This is a Pasuk and Tillim that you say every day, Mizmer Lasaida. It says, Hu asanu, velo anachno amo v'tzon marito. So if you look in the Tillim, in, 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 in the Ksiv, velo is written vav lamed aleph. The Kri, how is it read? Vav lamed vav. In other words, the Kri, the way it's written, it means he made us and we didn't make ourselves. Hu asanu, velo anachno. And we're also the Cree is the Huasanu Veloy, and to him he created us, and thus we are Amovitsan Marito. Now, obviously, with the Cree and the Xiv, they're both true. 
first and foremost, you look at the Ksiv, acknowledge that you're a created form. Who are son? I didn't create myself. I can't, I don't live my world of imagination is a figment of imagination. Who created me? God. That's the Ramban and Parsha spy. It all comes from a Pasik in Tilman. Iker al kol tachus abriya v'atayr v'amitzus sheyeda adam shakel bar o v'yodelo al kach. Look it up. The end of Barsha's book. Literally the last few lines. This is the avoid of Rosh Hashanah. The tshuva of Rosh Hashanah is not a tshuva on chatoim, and that's why there's no vidui. Vidui as written in the Kriya Sefer in Perik Aleph Tshuva is Gemar HaTshuva. Gemar HaTshuva means after you've, you, you've made decisions, you concretize it by expressing it. Like Dvarim Shabalev Enam Dvarim. According to Rambam Amar Nevuchim and Pechele Gil and Perik Lamed Vav, the Vidui is an external act to convince you, make you involved in your Tshuva, for you to believe that this can work. Because you don't believe it works, it doesn't work. It's an often a Rama Mahikhish Gagas Pair Gibba Lakhes, based on a Gemara and Krisis, that if you don't believe that Yom Kippur can do it for you, it won't do it for you. It's called Mavayit Bikapura. If you don't believe that Shiva will work, it won't work. And to help you convince yourself that this works, that there's these all this idea of Vidu, etc. Because once you get involved in, in action. You know, you, you get drawn into it, you believe it. That's a Rambam in time of mitzvahs, you really want to know. That's all when you finish. I did tshuva and I want to really strengthen the belief in it. I did tshuva, I want to concretize it. But how do we start with tshuva? Tshuva does not start with the protim. Tshuva doesn't work. Oh, I did this, I did that. I won't speak Lashon Hara anymore. You will. Why did you speak to Oh, because he's a jerk. Okay. Why are you like, why, why would you do it anyway? And the end result is because I don't have Kabbalah so Omar Hashemai. I see the world as me and I'm independent, and therefore I create my own agenda and my own rules. And God is in the background. I want to feel comfortable, be religious, as so I'll acknowledge. Uh -uh. It's not. Your you is a created form. Your sense of independence is a created form. Everything is nothing more than a created form. The fact that you are alive when you're eating food is because of the laws of science, which are nothing more than the expression of the will of God. The fact that you will have parnasa with doing X, Y, and Z is because God decided because of Torah and Mitzvah, whatever, you're going to have parnasa. But he wants you to do his shtadlis to make kavim to get this parnasa. If not, it won't go into this world. You'll get something else up in heaven. Believe me, if we would do that, we wouldn't have to lie and cheat in business. Because you're not going to get more than what was cuts of did. You really think God needs you to, to, to steal from income tax in order for you to get what he expects you to get? You really think so? Yeah, it's a guy, this and that, you know, all these different attempts. At the end, you really think God wants you to be a not a Ish Yosha? You're convinced. And the answer is because we really don't think it comes from him. Because we think we're independent, we lack in the Kaina Hakoy. This is the Pshat in the Pasik when it says, Vishafta Ad Havaya Lokecha, that's what Chuva is. It's not repenting, it's returning to the idea. That is a lokecha. That he is who leads my life. Equals, it's his game, his agenda, and I'm just his pawn. And we're only here to develop that awareness, that consciousness, as the Ramban says. So there's no vidui on Rosh Hashanah, because you spoke about the Siba. Yom Kippur, you're supposed to take all that. Theoretically, okay, now where did you really mess up practically? You take the SIBA and now talk about how that translated into symptoms. That's what you have to fix. So you got to fix the actions, but more so you have to start the process of 10 days of tshuva. 
first come first go back to the truth. First wake up. That's the and if you don't, you're a murdered by Malchus. Because Kabbalah's al Malchus means Vaya Lukecha. And if you don't go back to Avaya Lukecha and Rosh Hashanah, you're a pirate by Malchus. Mamish. The Meir is clear, it all comes from this Ramban and this Rambam. He thinks of Dvarma for Russian now. Yes, there is Chuba, but it's not Vidui. Vidui is on the Pratim. It's the Gemar. When we finish talking about the cloud, we start going into the Prat. We dig, yeah, and there's a cesspool there. It ain't pleasant. But Lechatchila doesn't start that way. I hate to say if there's any chance of success at all. Not just going around in a merry-go-round, oh, it wasn't me. Forget it, it was you. This is a Baba Maisha. It was you. You, 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 and you and me. We did these sins and that's who we were. I don't really want to do it. If you don't really want to do it, you wouldn't have done it. There's no one there. Is this, you know, this is not, you know, uh, C.S. Lewis, somebody whispering in your ear. I told you, these aren't machshavas zarais. They're your own machshavas. Machshavas of Kedusha, the machshava of Kaina Akwal, that's a machshava zara. <laughs> Very foreign to us. The tshuva of Rosh Hashanah, which started this period and should go into Yom Kippur, is this idea. That's why you still talk about the Malchus of a Kodesh Baruch and Yom Kippur in Shemana Esrei. We don't let that go. We add, and because we don't have that, these are the problems. But it's got to start there. That's what it's really all about. I think that that's the reason why, um, if you have, it's, it's all based on one Mechilta. And the Mechilta says it clear. If you don't have Kabbalah, there's no way you're going to fulfill the Xeris. Lushen on Mechilta, it's a crazy Lushen, which how can you not see it? What does he say there? How could they fulfill it? God himself says, there ain't no way it's going to happen without Kabbalah Omach Hashemai. And Kabbalah Omach Hashemai states in Rambam, in the Ramban, this is Anoichi Avaya Lokecha, et cetera, everything we learned in this class. So can Tshuva work? Yes. And I honestly believe that those who really made changes in their lives, really did tshuva, that's what happened to them. They realized that everything was meaningless and they looked for a source of meaning and changed their paradigm. They switched the way they experienced life. From people don't do it. I hate to say it, the from people are missing the boat. God gave this great thing for tshuva, the frumis don't do tshuva. God gave Eretz Yisrael, the frumis don't do Eretz Yisrael. You know what I mean? Somehow it always goes with the people who are Shifrei Kalim. Eretz Yisrael was created by people who are Shifrei Kalim. Tshuva would happen with people that are Shifrei Kalim. Our noses are up here. We're a bunch of unicorns. Let's be the Amis. We're Pirik Oil Machu We have to learn. Halavai, I should be a BT. In the meantime, I haven't met anybody that's an FFB. Room from birth, unless from means full of riches, many mitzvahs, you know what I mean? But if it means religious, are you kidding? Then no one's religious. The question is, which halachas don't we keep? Do we live with a God consciousness? To what extent is Shivisi Avai the Negdi Samid, that big perikimur in the Vuchim, that first Ramon Shulchanor, real? Or that's the one thing we don't keep, which is that's because they don't keep anything. So I want to wish us all that. Um, May, this is for my Yitzvah Nalev. I can be, be very blunt about this. Halavai shi konsu belibchem. You should know that this is this is the avodas hayam. This is what it's really all about. Rukayne akoyl. He's a boy and we're a nivra. I can give you exercise if you want, but I'm like, I just I, 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 you know, I can give you one thing. You know, it's very hard to do. Yehi Chavoyit has 19 times Shem Avayim. Try, just in Yehi Chavoyit, every time you say Shem Avayim, think, Chayve Kadmu Mishurbenu Akol B'chepetz V'yachayvus. It's going to take you time to say Yehi Chavoyit. 
But if you drill it into your head, you may start thinking that way. And that may change your life. It may change your life. Another thing I'm going to suggest is to fill those seeds in Shulchan Aruch in the beginning of our Rechaim, how to dress and sneers, etc. There's a Chathila created only to internalize the idea of Shivisi Avayla Negdi Samid, if you know the Sif, the order of the Shulchan Aruch. Those are just artificial maisim, which to somehow help you experience emotionally the fact that you're Ayman Lifna Ashkina. This will obviously help you finally to Davin Shman Esalah That's why it's Lifne Hashem, because that's what Shuva is to return Lifne Hashem. That's the mock of the Rambo. Anoichi Avaya Lokecha, Kabbalah's Omatu Shamai. Have a great Gmachsim, a good year, a Gmachsim, a Taifa. It's a pleasure seeing you all. If you have beautiful lives, and we can be Mabu covered Shemayim, and you know, Tachis Adam, Shayeda Adam, Shakel Boroi, Yoidele Al Kach, Zait Gebench, Rocha Vatzlacha. Bye. Thank you, Abby. Thank you, Abby. Thank you, Abby. Thank you, Abby. I'm leaving this now. Bye. תודה רבה רב לחמה, thank you very much. שנה טובה, גמר חתימה טובה לכולם. אמן, אמן.